Good morning everybody, it's 9 o'clock and 9 o'clock is with me Father Warner. Today we are in the Thursday of the second week in ordinary time. Our text is taken from Mark chapter 3 verse 7 to 12 and I've entitled today's teaching Speaking Truth to Power. So let's read the text first, it's a short text and remember that um, we are now entering a new section in the Gospel of Mark, the last one being chapter 2 verse 1 to chapter 3 verse 6, we did uh, the five controversy stories. Now we enter a new section. Let's read the text. Jesus departed with his disciples to the sea, and the great multitudes from Galilee followed him. Hearing all that he was doing, they came to him in great numbers from Judea, from Jerusalem, from Idumea beyond the Jordan and the regions around the Tyre and Sidon. He told his disciples to have a boat ready for him because of the crowds so that they would not crush him. For he had cured many so that all who had diseases pressed upon him to touch him. Whenever the unclean spirits saw him, they fell down before him and shouted, You are the Son of God. But he sternly ordered them not to make him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, my dear friends, there is a stark contrast among um, the Jewish leadership and the Jewish people towards Jesus. And you can see this so clearly in the text. If you look at the last section that ended uh, in chapter 3 verse 6, the last section ended with the Pharisees and the friends and supporters of Herod Antipas uh, plotting to destroy him. Chapter 3 verse 6, the Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against him how to destroy him. Now the people on the other hand um, simply love Jesus. In fact, we are told these are, the, there are tremendous masses, yeah, so much so that they are crushing him. And if you look at the area that is covered, Judea, Jerusalem, Idumea, beyond the Jordan, um, Ju Jerusalem is in the south, uh, Tyre and Sidon is in the north, um, uh, northwest, and the rest is all in the north. In short, the entire Jewish people, were just flocking to Jesus. So the people on the other hand, as compared to the Pharisees and the Herodians, love Jesus. But St. Mark will also bring out in that sense the fickleness of humankind who blow sometimes as the wind does. One day uh, they will cry out Hosanna and the other it is crucify him. And St. Mark will show you this in the gospel very clearly. So don't get taken in suddenly by the fact that there are crowds because these same crowds we know will turn against him. Mark develops this fickleness um, in chapter 3 verse 7 all the way to chapter 6 verse 6. So you will see now the fickleness of humankind, ours, yours and mine too. We blow hot, we blow cold with the Lord so often. Now at first the people in general flock to him in droves. From these, we will see that he will choose in the next text, uh, he will choose 12. Um, he, these are people, as scripture says, he wanted, yeah, I'm jumping the text a bit, chapter 3 verse 12, he went up the high mountain and called to those whom he wanted. He wanted and he uh, calls them, he names them apostles. It comes from the Greek word which means an, an apostle is one who is sent. But then the opposition to Jesus' ministry comes, as we will see, swift and extremely fast and it comes from all quarters. His family, the scribes and finally he is rejected by the people of his own hometown in Galilee. And you will see this as we continue to study chapter 3 all the way to chapter 6. Now today's reading focuses on the wave of an overwhelming positive response shown to Jesus. He has moved from Capernaum to some site, we do not know where, some site near the Sea of Galilee. 
those who flock to meet Jesus are people from every corner. As I said, they are people from Idumea, from Tyre and from Sidon. They are mentioned in the gospel today. Um, these, these names which are mentioned in the gospel today are places that were situated outside even the lands of traditional Judaism, of traditional Israel. Tyre and Sidon were definitely for the longest time enemies of the people of Israel. And yet these people are all flocking to meet Jesus. These, however, um, had these, these areas outside um, traditional Judaism also, however, had a sizable Jewish population. So either they were Jews or they were Gentiles, as we will see in the Gospel of Luke, uh, who, having heard of Jesus, flock to hear him. They come to touch him. And um, so much so, as we are told, he takes a boat. I like that line in today's scripture. He told his disciples to have a boat ready. I can almost see Jesus saying in today's day, can you get my car ready? Can you get my car ready? I need to go out. Um, but yes, uh, the scriptures put it so mildly. Uh, boats at that time were used as a mode of transport. I guess if the Lord was here today, he might have jumped onto a motorbike also, depending where he was. But St. Mark also mentions that, if you listen carefully, he mentions that Jesus healed many. Now, uh, this tends to create a bit of a problem because sometimes you wonder why did he create, uh, why did he heal many and not heal all? Now, the Greek translation, uh, which uh, for, for many is polu, P O L L O U, and interpret, uh, interpreters interpret this word as he healed some but not all. That's why the English translation uses many. And I said, this led some in the early church to interpret the word uh, polu to suggest that Jesus could not heal all because of some personal deficiency. And therefore, when you look at the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew will correct this. When he wrote his Gospel, he changes polu to pantas, meaning Jesus will heal all. Now, remember that Mark was the first Gospel uh, to be written. And whenever you write a Gospel or whenever you write a text, there are always somebody who will poke holes and say, well, he healed many, why did he not heal all? Now, in narrating the rejection of Jesus, what is Mark trying to do? Mark is driving home a point to all of us, to the Christian readers who read his text in the first century and also to us, that wherever the good news is preached, there are those who are bound to oppose it and often there are those who will oppose it violently as we have seen in our nation and we have seen also uh, across the world that when Christ is preached there are those who oppose it and oppose it violently as um, the last couple of months have seen. Thankfully in the last 15 days we have not heard of many attacks on uh, Christian churches but we heard quite a few of them in the months of November and December of 2021. Now, the good news does not contain revolutionary or subversive teachings, but sometimes, not sometimes, but the message of love when you preach it, preach it often upsets the apple cart of power. It upsets the apple cart of position and of pride. The good news, what is it doing? It calls for a radical new way of dealing with hate, with anger, with jealousy. It makes those who are powerless in the eyes of the world now powerful in God's eyes and therefore a threat to those who use power to bully others. But the good news teaches us to speak truth to power, gently yet effectively. And so preach the good news. There will always be opposition and I dare say sometimes even opposition from within the church. People who allow their personal jealousies to get in the way. Don't be deterred by it. There will be times when sometimes you are overwhelmed by the attack that you face and I must admit that you will feel uh, rather uh, 
you know, a put off, you may want to take a break, um, do that. Maybe if you feel that at times, uh, especially if you are a Christian leader, if you feel that uh, the internal attacks, not the external attacks, the internal attacks sometimes from the own community out of jealousy, take a break. I do that sometimes. I just take a break and then I come back. Yeah, I come back even strongly. So don't, um, we are human. All of us are human. We are going to be af uh, affected by uh, people who attack our faith from outside, even worse from inside. And you must see that this happened even in the first century of Judaism. Read the Acts of the Apostles, you will see it so clearly. The word jealousy appears so often in the f Acts of the Apostles. You will be surprised. Actually take a highlighter and, and mark it. Because this is a human um, issue that we all deal with. But take a break for your own peace of mind. But don't give up your ministry. Don't give it up. Remember that God has planted a seed in your heart and uh, sometimes even if he shuts a door, I remember one lady telling me, my parish priest has stopped me from uh, being a Eucharistic minister. And I said, okay, that's fine. Can you look out for some other work that you'd like to do? And she said, okay, Father, I'll think about it. She was very upset initially. And then she prayed about it for a while and then she got back to me and she said, you know, Father, I have now started doing SCCA work. And she says, I enjoy it because I'm such a chatterbox. I like to talk to people. And she said, there are so many lonely people in my community. I go and I do all this work. So remember that when, if you are not welcome somewhere in your ministry, just stop it. It's okay. It's not the be all and end all. Move on and let God speak to you. So today I want to pray with you. I also want to pray today for uh, my dear friends, Dominique and Clinton Serejo. Many of you have heard Clinton sing and Dominique. But they've been good friends of mine now for 21 years. I think, if I'm not mistaken then, this should be their 20th wedding anniversary. But uh, happy anniversary, Dom and Clinton. I remember so um, uh, clearly the day you got married and even the wedding reception. I also want to pray for my friend Nishita, who celebrates her birthday today. Happy birthday, Nishita. And for Nancy and Santosh, Nancy was formerly a parishioner of mine uh, in St. Jude. And I pray for her. She's got a beautiful, beautiful family. Uh, so to both your daughters and to Santosh, have a blessed day. And so let's pray today. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we pray today for those in ministry. For those who, in your name, have felt empowered to go out and preach the good news. To teach the scriptures teach at Sunday school, be Eucharistic ministers, be ushers, sing in the choir, either as lectors or cantors, reading in the church, for our children who are altar servers, for our many sacristans across the city of Mumbai, for all those who continue to serve in the SCCs, in the parish councils, in the various ministries of SVP. All of them, Lord, love you and desire to serve your church. I want to pray, Lord, for all of them who today may feel overwhelmed with work. Perhaps some also disappointed. Perhaps those who feel discouraged. I want to pray for all of them, Lord, that you may renew in us through the, your Holy Spirit a new zeal, a new love for you. Let not the attacks of the evil one put us down. Let us continue to persevere in proclaiming you as our Lord. I want to also pray today in a special way for our charismatic renewals that brought so much of joy to our prayer life in all our parishes. 
I want to pray for the movements that encouraged family life and couples, the marriage encounter, the Couples for Christ movement. I want to lift up our youth center that cares for the youth, our catechetical center that cares for children. I want to pray also for our laity who work in the prisons with Father Glaston in prison ministry, for those who work for the environment, for those who work in our NGOs, our centers for social action. Bless all our ministries, Lord. Bless the work that we do. And help us to be focused on you as our leader, as our guide, as our stay. In your loving name I make this prayer. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Don't forget to like this video, leave your comments. Uh, do subscribe to uh, this channel. Uh, it's very important. And uh, I know many of you do this. Share this video with your friends. All you got to do is when I, I, I send it to you also by WhatsApp at around 4 o'clock India time. And all you got to do is just send it by WhatsApp to several other people. Um, God bless you. On behalf of Lenny and Nadia Suarez, I want to thank you to all of you who have uh, been generously reaching out to us and offering a meal. Um, if you'd like to do it, I know there are semi several slots available for the month of Jan and Feb. So if you'd like to reach out, um, celebrate a birthday which is in your family with the children of the Love Joy Hope Foundation, we would love to hear from you. God bless you everybody.